Hi, I'm Jordan Menzing, an engineer here at Patch My PC, and today I'm going to walk you through the process of setting up our free Power BI software update dashboard for Configuration Manager. Let's go ahead and get started. So we do make a few assumptions here, and the first of which is that you've already gone ahead and downloaded and installed the Power BI desktop free app. Uh, at this point, I've also assumed that you have access to the Configuration Manager database and that you've downloaded this zip folder here from our website. So I'm going to go ahead and extract this. And get that all opened up here. I'm going to go ahead and open up this. Now, the first thing to note is this is a Power BI desktop template. The only reason why I want to call this out and mention it is, is because if you happen to go to Power BI and open up the desktop application rather than just double clicking the application, if you go to try to open it, let's go ahead and just close that out real quick. And if we go open report, browse reports. And if we were to try and go to say our downloads folder here, we would notice that there's nothing in here. And we need to change this PBIX file type to a PBIT file type in order to open that. Go ahead and get that to open up here. And we're going to get a prompt. This prompt has some pretty simple information that we need to fill in. The information is just that we need to know the SQL server that we're reaching out and connecting to. That's going to be wherever your site server's database is on. In my case, it's a server called SCCM. Uh, and then I need to give it the primary, the SQL database name. So in my case, it's going to be cm underscore pr1. Okay. And then I need to do a collection filter. Uh, again, super easy stuff. I could do something weird like... Uh, sum space percent which is a sql wildcard so it would find all collections that start with the word sum at the beginning of it um or i could just stick a wildcard in here a percent and it would give me all the collections and all of the software updates and machines that are related to them go ahead and click load let that load up here now you are going to get prompted you'll get prompted i believe seven times there are seven different queries that are used in order to build this data um behind the scenes here we can go ahead and click run on each one of these. If you want, you're more than welcome to go out and read these before you actually click through them. Since I'm the one that wrote them, I'm not going to read through each one of these and say, yeah, they look good because I wrote them. Um, but you can go out. We'll actually host these, make them available on our website so that you can read them and validate that we're not doing anything or make any changes. These are just straight select statements where we're pulling data out of the environment. All right. Now what it's going to do is it's going to start loading the data and getting all that data loaded up into the model. Minimize our visualization pane here real quick while we're waiting. There we go. All right, so in this report, we have three different tabs. We have our compliance overview tab down here. We have our workstation compliance and our server compliance tab all down through here. A couple of other things to note, which is we do have some filters that are up here. Um, they are software update group filters, so we can choose, hey, show me only software updates that are related to a specific group. So only show me compliance statistics for my defender definition software update group. Or I could choose another group or anything like that. I can also filter based on the date that the software updates were released out to the environment to help filter down any noise or old updates or anything maybe I don't care about. Or maybe I only care about updates released in the 30 days. I can filter all that information. Then we have some visualizations. We've got this wheel right here that shows our workstation pack compliance. We've got only one device compliant and four non-compliant based on every single possible software update and combination out there. Uh, very important thing to just kind of note here is that certain combinations could result in no compliance data or certain combinations could result in very scary data, uh, such as machines never being compliant because of weird patches or things like that. Either way, all of this comes together to create what's called total device patch compliance, which essentially is looking for 90% of the machines in your environment to be considered compliant. Down here, we have a permutation of what your client install status looks like across your environment. And again, this the idea being here is, is, is that if you can see that the configuration manager is installed on those agents, then you can actually get compliance data. Whereas if you have machines that are missing it, uh, then you can't get information about them. And so you have a gap inside of your knowledge that you need to deal with. Now, before we continue on to one of the other tabs, down here at the bottom of our page, I want to talk about the other visualization panels that Power BI has. On the left-hand side here, we can also look, instead of at visualizations, but at the straight raw data behind the scenes here. And we can also look at the data relationship map. 
This might be something important to take a quick look at when you're getting used to this template to better understand how all of the data is related to each other. This is where all those different queries I was mentioning earlier all end up. They all end up here and they are all cross-linked and referenced to each other. All right, let's go ahead and head on back over there. Oh, looks like we got some updates here that we need to apply in a little bit. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at workstation compliance real quick here. So if we take a quick look at this, we can again see that we've got some software update group data here. We can choose a software update group. We could filter for a specific article ID through here if we wanted to. We could look for all updates released. Now, what's also interesting about this is, is, is this date released will filter this set of article IDs. So if I said something like, hey, only show me updates that were released in, say, the last 30 days, it would filter the number of article IDs that I then had to choose from over here. Kind of a nifty way to start drilling down through your report of the data you really care about. Here's where our collection information comes back into play. So that we can say, you know what, I only really care about machines and their compliance data for machines that are members of the all lab systems collection, or maybe only ones that are members of this maintenance windows collection. And we can go through here and we can pick different ones for that to get figured out. We can also filter our patch data to only show us compliance data for patches that are deployed. If it's not deployed, maybe I don't care about it, right? So if I choose deployed, you can see I've only got a few patches that I'm actually missing all of a sudden here. So just kind of some interesting things. And of course, we can also filter by vendor for Microsoft or vendor patch my PC. And again, we could also choose some operating system information over here. And then of course, down here at the bottom, we can click server compliance and we can do the exact same data, but in this case, it's filtered to servers. The way that this panel is filtered to servers is by this device class is server on this page over here in the filters tab. Now, this data, once you've pulled it out, if you were to go file and save, it would save in what's called a PBIX file. And that data would then become static within the contents of this model of this file. So what would you do if you wanted to update that data or refresh it because things have changed? It's tomorrow, it's the next day. Well, the simplest way to do this is if you happen to be the one that's running the report at the time, it's just you can just click refresh up here. And what that will do is it will rerun those seven queries to refresh that data, pull it back in and update the model. Another option that you have available to you is you could leverage a Power BI gateway on premise to refresh this data periodically and put that data into the cloud. You could then display this data inside of Teams or SharePoint or a whole bunch of other different fun solutions. Thanks for watching. This has just been a very quick walkthrough of how our Power BI software update compliance board works. And I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments down below and I'll get back to you.